You're next, right? You're ready? Creative solutions to already solved problems. This sounds like my entire job. <laughs> so give it up for Gene Gautamer. Thank you. All right, hi. Creative solutions to already solved problems is the name that our team gave to all the ridiculous code samples we found in some of the projects we were working on. All of these are real, only the names have been changed, and unfortunately we had a lot of these to choose from. The fixes for all of these examples are gonna be really easy. Those red flags in your IDE are there for a reason. Static code can uh, warn you ahead of time, static code analysis can warn you ahead of time, and if you need help, ask for it. So first, you can't always trust that the compiler is gonna get things right on the first try. So maybe you only need to import date once, but it can't hurt to import it a second time, right? And I know Java Lang classes don't need to be imported at all, but it really can't hurt to make sure, right? And if you can't trust the compiler to do an import correctly, you're certainly not gonna trust that a list of strings contains only strings. So it's best to make sure that you convert each of those strings to strings explicitly. And it's not just the compiler that you can't trust, right? Source control isn't infallible. So best practice is always to check in old copies of files that you might need later, or in some cases, new copies of files. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to work. Some developers get a hold of the Gang of Four book on design patterns, and they figure this is the solution to all of their problems. Other developers just grab a couple of the names of the patterns and tack them onto their classes to get a quick win. I'm not sure why everyone doesn't do it. It's so easy. Some languages give you constructs that make your code much more concise, like this gem that sets the, va the variable to the value of a function if true is equal to true. Otherwise, it sets the variable to false and presumably ushers in chaos. But concise isn't always what you want. Sometimes you want to be a little bit more explicit with complex things like Booleans. So you better be really, really careful to spell it all out. You should also be really clear, too, that hash code is returning what was not returned. <laughs> but let's face it, assert messages and, and, and error messages in, in fail, in fail uh, tests can be difficult. So it's best to make sure that you're really careful with how you word them. Double negatives don't not make sense for fail messages, right? Defensive programming is the way to go, right? Null checks are really important, but so is checking for blank strings. Even when the objects aren't strings, all of that defensive coding means a lot of long methods like this class that had just a few methods that crept over the 150 line per method limit, like by 1,000 lines. But if you can't be the longest method out there, you should stand out in other ways. Like this method, it's only 1,334 lines long, but it is 20% more complex than the nearest competitor. Or this class, right? If we have long methods, we can also have long classes. This class, just a simple DTO with 638 fields and no business logic, <laughs> crept just over the 1,000 line per, per class limit by 42,735 lines. And all of that long code means you have to do a lot of testing. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. This method, this test method, goes through all the classes in a package and execute every, executes every getter and setter just to increase code coverage and doesn't test anything. <laughs> so when you have exceptions, you have to do something with the message, right? You can't just let an, uh, an exceptional, condition, exceptional condition go un, untreated. So you have to do something with the message. Look at it. Maybe not log it, assign it to something, or print it out. 
but look at the message, right? Or maybe you want to do something more complex with it, like catch it, rethrow it unchanged, immediately catch it again, and then print out the stack trace. This is generated code, which I'm not sure makes it better or worse. Somebody actually wrote code to generate this. Sometimes our exceptions aren't as, excep aren't as exceptional as we'd like. Like this class was constantly throwing a null pointer exception because the test method returns a null every time. So I guess we just have to expect an exception in that case, right? Constants could be really helpful for letting us know what things are used for. They help explain magic values. How else would you know what dash was representing? Or what action the value of 12 was managing? But be sure to go ahead and rename the ones that the language gives you that have really complex names that are unclear. And be f be feel free to go ahead and add lots of extra con information in the comments, right? Especially for things that could mean anything, like a Y or an N indicator. And finally, constants have some really good values. If the constant value changes, you can make just a change in one place and have that spread throughout your entire application. So if the value of Boolean true changes here, we can change it in one place and be sure that the entire, the entire application is updated. And maybe that explains that ternary operator earlier. Thank you very much.